So today we get your first look at the new Garmin InReach Messenger Satellite Communicator. Of course, this is not Garmin's first satellite communicator. You've probably seen something like the InReach Mini here or other InReach devices over the years. And I can already hear you furiously typing into your keyboard about Apple's new iPhone 14 and its satellite capabilities, satellite messaging capabilities. And I'll talk about that later in the video and how that differs, because it is quite different. First, let me explain the purpose of these devices. They are satellite communicator devices, meaning they are designed to be in places where there is no cellular connectivity no Wi-Fi, no signal, out in the middle of nowhere. Just last week, for example, I was hiking and I was solidly out of cellular range. Uh, and in this past summer as well, for an eight-day trek, again, out of cellular range. With the InReach series devices, though, you can send not just messages and tracking where you are, status to friends and family and things like that, but you can also send SOS messages. So if you get yourself in trouble, there's a little SOS button on the side, you open up this cap there, you press that, and then it connects you to an emergency response center, and they'll coordinate your rescue no matter where you are in the world. If that could be bringing a helicopter to you, it could be sending the Coast Guard out into the ocean, that's sort of the point. And of course, with that, you do pay a subscription fee. Uh, it ranges from about $12 a month if you buy it annually, all the way up to 65 bucks a month uh, if you buy it monthly for all the features enabled. So then, how is the new Messenger different from the InReach Mini? Well, they're both similar that they have the ability to send messages, quick messages, for example, saying I'm checking in at camp or I'm starting for the day. They also have the ability to type out longer messages either on the device themselves, this has a little screen on the front of it, or the ability to use your smartphone paired to it to type out longer messages. They both have an SOS button hidden under little caps on both sides of them. They both have Type-C USB charging. The Messenger has essentially double the battery life, up to 28 days in 10 minute tracking mode, meaning that every 10 minutes it's plotting a tracking point, and this thing lasts 28 days versus 14 days here. And then if we reduce the frequency of the tracking, this can go up to 46 days uh, in 30 minute tracking mode versus just 30 days here. Uh, and again, these are really long time periods, but that's the point for these sort of devices to last a really long time. Inversely though, the InReach Mini 2 can actually load a course and you can use that to navigate your way through the woods if you wanted to. It's not the best solution for it, but I did it this summer, it worked just fine, uh, versus the Messenger doesn't have that. But what the Messenger brings with it is a brand new app called, well, Messenger. A little confusing, Messenger device, Messenger app, but that Messenger app is gonna be available for other InReach devices. And I'll put the list in the bottom right there, including the mini InReach 2. And it basically consolidates all of the messaging into a single app. And with this new app is the ability to seamlessly transition from cellular connectivity to satellite connectivity. So the idea is that if you're hiking along like I was last week, I start off in cell phone range, and then eventually I went to satellite connectivity only, meaning no cell phone range around, the app can seamlessly go back and forth and then only send messages on the cheapest network that it needs to. Uh, so that's kind of handy. That feature will come to any of the devices that use a Messenger app going forward, including the devices that are listed at the bottom right there. Uh, so it's not just limited to the Messenger device itself. Meanwhile, the Messenger device also has one last interesting party trick. You can reverse charge on it. So you can use the battery in this device to go ahead and charge something else, in particular your phone, for example. So you plug your phone into this, uh, it's not wireless charging, so you plug your phone in, then you go into the menu, enable reverse charging. That reverse charging will stay on for 20 minutes at a time. So it doesn't want to completely drain the battery on this uh, because otherwise you'd be in a bigger pickle than you probably were. The idea being to give you just a tiny bit more charge perhaps on your phone to send a longer, more complex message that while you can type it out manually on this device, is really kind of cumbersome. Or perhaps to simply get maps on your phone or some other thing that you may have in your phone, but you need just a tiny bit of battery life to do that. Note that that reverse charging is not available once this device drops below 25% charge because it wants to preserve its ability to send an SOS message. So with that, let me just show you the interface on the device and how it all works, and then we'll talk about the Apple comparison. Okay, so this is the InReach Messenger device, and this is the InReach Messenger app. I'll put the app aside for the moment. We'll come back to that in just a second. And here is the device itself. Now, to be really clear, you do not need the phone at all for the device. You can use this totally standalone. I'll show you that right now. So you got some buttons down the bottom here. You do have a lanyard attachment there. You have your USB-C power port right there. There we go. On this side here, you have a power button, and you've also got the SOS button. Again, it's covered by this hard plastic cover, so you can't accidentally press it. Uh, it's pretty safe right there. So at the bottom here, I got those buttons. I can go right here. I can see my messages. I can go into tracking to enable it, for example. I can check the weather. I can do track back to get me back to my starting point. So again, I can't like route forward to other things, but I can track back to my starting point. I can check my service plan, and I can go into settings. So we'll go here real quick to tracking. Uh, and you can see the last tracking point that I set, it was at 4.30, uh, but I can go ahead and go back, and then go into weather, for example, and I can request a basic forecast. I did that a little bit ago. Uh, so you can do basic forecasts, more advanced forecasts, different levels depending on your service plan. We'll go back here again. 
Uh, here is track back. This will get me back to the starting point, but again, it's only recording a point every 10 minutes, so it's really not all that often. Uh, but again, it'll get you back to kind of where you're going from. You can see when I do that, you can look at how long ago, the time, uh, and the distance that I want that point to be uh, to track back to. Going all the way back to uh, earlier this morning when I started this up, and once you choose a point, you can follow the path or go straight line. So you basically can choose to track back on the path that you took, or you can just do a straight line there. Meanwhile, here are messages. I can crack this open and see my existing messages, um, or I can go to the right and I can choose a new message. So here we go, choose a new message. I can select a contact from my list. So I'll choose uh, myself for now, there we go. And I can choose a quick text message, meaning I'm basically gonna choose a template one here. Um, so you can see a couple of templates I've already created and you can change this if I want to. So lots of options here and you can tweak these ahead of time. So you have like custom ones that are applicable for what you want. Or I can go back and I can actually just type out something. So let me just do this here, type reply, and then I can type out a full reply. Uh, and then this is the part where the app is more useful. We'll talk about that in just one quick second. Uh, but again, you can do this here if you want to. It takes a long time, but hey, if you're stuck in the wilderness and I've got nothing else to do, then that's fine. And then back on this main menu here, if I press this OK button, uh, I can check in to the last known contact that I had. I can go to the right. I can stop tracking altogether. I can go here. I can check for messages again. I can view my coordinates, or I can simply just close the menu. So now let's talk about the app. So the point of the app is basically to go ahead and do all the interactions on your phone as opposed to on this device. As you saw, if I wanted to type out a longer text message, kind of cumbersome to do it on this, but again, you do not need your phone at all. This is just an easier way to doing it. It uses Bluetooth from the app to your device. Uh, and so you can do this in airplane mode, whatever the case may be. So in this case, if I go into settings, you can see some of the things I can change my tracking interval, how often I wanna do this, for example, every two minutes or up to every four hours to save more battery. Uh, so this past summer when I was camping, uh, during the day, I kept it usually every five to 10 minutes, uh, but at night when I was camping, I basically tuned it down to every four hours or so. Uh, and so just, you can do that there. You can turn auto track on. So every time you turn on the device, it automatically turns on. Uh, you can change the sounds if you want to for different uh, chirps that come from it. In the phone option, you have the ability to go ahead and check whether or not the status is connected. Uh, going down again in in-reach remote, this is if you have a Garmin uh, device, say, for example, a watch or one of their edge computers for the biking side, cycling side, uh, or any of their handheld devices. You can actually connect it to this and kind of control it from that watch. So you don't have to always check your phone, for example, for those messages. And then finally, system has some of the options for changing display units, etc. Some of the things that you would expect. Now within this page right here, if you go down to the left-hand side, you see messages. Uh, and this is where I can go ahead and send messages to my contacts. Uh, so you can see myself right there. I can tap, pick me up here. I can type a new message and say, hello in the middle of the video, right? There we go. I can add my location on and then click the send button there and off it goes. Uh, now this is where it's cool. It'll use the right connectivity option. So right now, because my phone is on cell it'll use that cellular connectivity. And if we tap on this right there, you can see it says internet message is a message type versus if I go ahead and swipe off of my cellular, so I'm gonna turn that off, there we go, airplane mode entirely, uh, and now type another message, hello world, not hell world, nope, hello world, there we go, we send that. Uh, it's now gonna be thinking a lot longer because it's gonna utilize the satellite connectivity here. Now right now it's sitting like underneath the tree in the not really in a great spot for it. Um, but if I put it up here on top of the camera for a second, that'll go out, there we go. You can actually just hear it go whoop, there we go. And it's done. And it says satellite message now is the type that it was sent. It's as quick and instant as that, even though there's tree cover above it, as long as it wasn't in the actual trunk of the tree, it sends out pretty much instantly. And then with the InReach Messenger app, you can also do group messages. That's ideal if you have perhaps a large party of people traveling together on a hike, et cetera, and they all have InReach devices. You can say, hey, I'm checking it now, and it goes to everyone in the group, uh, as opposed to just having to individually send that to each person, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Finally, there's the Initiate SOS option. I'm not gonna tap that right now, but essentially when you do tap that on the phone or on the device, uh, it'll go ahead and it'll connect to the Garmin Emergency Response Center. Uh, from there, they figure out what your problem is uh, and how they can fix your problem or how they can you know, rescue you, et cetera. And that's all coordinated with the local agencies nearby. So, and of course, at that point, they figure out the right way to get you out of that pickle. Uh, and sometimes that's just sitting and waiting for you know rescuers to kind of hike on in. And other times it may be getting a helicopter in to, to pull you out of that situation. So the big question a lot of people have asked is how does the InReach devices differ from what Apple's announced for the iPhone 14? 
And for those not familiar, the really quick version is Apple announced their new emergency SOS via satellite option. Uh, so the ability to reach emergency responders via just holding your phone up. You get this little app on the iPhone 14 uh, in particular, so it's not on a previous hardware to that, assumingly beyond the iPhone 15 and 16 or whatever else is down the road. But starting off with the iPhone 14, starting off in November, uh, you can hold your phone up, you have to find the satellite, uh, and then it'll go ahead and send these brief messages to emergency responders. So you can't like text your friend that you need more nachos or something like that. It's only for emergency response via these relay centers. And then from there, Apple figures out the right people to contact to go basically save your life. In addition to that though, and more casually, they're enabling the Find My network on top of that. Uh, so that means that your friends and family, if they're in your Find My, like friends bubble, if you will, uh, can go ahead and still track you uh, using Find My. So that part does work over satellite. And that is awesome for more casual, you know, camping, hiking, whatever the case may be, where you just want to check in on someone and they may not have cellular service. But again, within that, you can't just simply text your friend via satellite at this point in time. I suspect that'll come down the road, but not today. Now, Apple says this will be free for two years, uh, but they didn't clarify whether that was like two years from then or two years from the date of purchase of your phone or what it'll cost after that. All that's just a little bit fuzzy. Now, again, it is very, very cool and it will save many, many lives. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that get rolled out and I will test that and show how that compares down the road but it's also very different than in-reach devices. Uh, so the very first thing to note is that an in-reach device is totally global, meaning I can be in the ocean, I can be in you know, Canada, I can be in Africa, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's all going to work there. Versus again, Apple's is at least initially limited to that one kind of area of United States and Canada, or at least a chunk of Canada. The next thing is that on in-reach, you can send messages to anyone uh, and they aren't just emergency messages, meaning that you can send it to a friend, a check-in saying, hey, I might need supplies up ahead in five or seven days, or I'm just checking in for the night that we reach camp. All those things are possible on in-reach, customization of messages, long messages, short messages. Uh, you can't do that today on the iPhone option. The in each platform also allows you to send your friends a tracking link so they can basically follow the progress of your particular adventure, whatever it may be. They can see where you've been and so on. You can change the update frequency of that tracking link. Uh, well, Apple has the Find My, that's just about showing you where you are at that point in time. Like your blue dot is here, uh, but we don't know where you were, you know, an hour ago or a week ago, whatever the case may be. Next, in Apple's keynote and support article for this, they are incredibly cautious about the positioning in particular when it comes to your phone and finding that satellite. And that you really do have to be very particular about where it is to find the exact satellite you're talking to, holding it there, uh, potentially for up to minutes at a time, even if you're in relatively light tree cover. This is actually pretty light tree cover. It might look more dense behind me, but it's actually pretty light. Uh, versus an in-reach device, more or less just works. Uh, as long as you don't have this thing upside down, or even this one here, as long as it's not like, really deep in the bottom of my bag, it pretty much works. It'll eventually find its connectivity uh, and it sends that message out. Again, in all of Apple's support articles, they've been overwhelmingly cautious in their wording, even saying things like hills can get in the way of this. So it'll be really interesting to see in real life how well this actually works. On the flip side though, the in-reach device requires a recurring monthly subscription plan. You can pause that if you want to. Uh, for example, you want to use it just in the summer and pause it for the winter, etc. cetera. Uh, but it is costly, you know, starting off at roughly 12 bucks a month on an annual plan, 15 bucks a month if you just buy it by the month. Uh, and the number of plans they have is super complex, super overwhelming. Uh, there's consumer plans and pro plans and three different styles of plans and then per text message, all this stuff, it gets really complex. It's just needlessly complex at this point. And I think that becomes a real stumbling block for Garmin. There's a lot of people that look at those plans and go, that just looks like people are gonna nickel and dime me for everything and say, nah, I'm just not gonna bother with this. Even trying to find the pricing for this video took a while of like click, 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 click. And it just was constantly on different pages. It's just, it's a mess. It's way too complex. And I think like Garmin's greater like watch lineup of stuff, there's just too many options for people. But these are really two different solutions for two different people. So let me give you an example from my family that helps make sense of where these two things sort of fit in. Uh, my father-in-law lives in Newfoundland, Canada. That's a part of Canada you fly over right before you sort of like hit Greenland. It's not that far like polar bears. They've eventually like wander down there and stuff like that. So middle of nowhere. And he goes towards even further the middle of nowhere uh, when he goes out in the summer and the fall, out to the cabin and stuff like that. In that case, the iPhone option for him is perfect. When he upgrades his iPhone someday down the road from being like an iPhone 8 or something to, you know, an iPhone 14 or above, this satellite option is ideal for him for an emergency scenario. There is no way he's going to pay for an in-reach device, let alone the in-reach service. It's just not gonna happen. The iPhone is perfect for him and he lives in the right area that it would actually work out reasonably well. Inversely, you've got me. Uh, I am traveling constantly on different continents. I am, you know, deep in the backwoods. I'm deep in the mountains, etc. In that scenario, the iPhone option isn't really super ideal. One, it just doesn't have coverage, for example, here in Europe. Uh, and two, it may not have coverage in all sorts of other places. And three, the limitations around the city 
signal quality, the tracking, all that kind of stuff isn't what I need. Uh, that's where the in-reach device is a much better option. Yet at the same time, having that iPhone option as a backup when I am in the United States, for example, or I am in Canada, is pretty handy. Point being that as much as the media wants these two to be like head-to-head -head competing, the reality is that while they do have overlap, they are targeting different groups of people. Now, of course, down the road, three years, five years, seven years, whatever, they may be directly competing head to head, but not today. And that's probably gonna take quite a while until we get there. Anyways, down the road, I will do a full in-depth review of the Garmin InReach Messenger, uh, as well as also doing a full review of the iPhone 14 uh, SOS capability via satellite. Uh, once both of these things, I've got a bit more time on them and stuff like that. Hopefully you found this video interesting or useful. If so, go ahead and give a like at the bottom or subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.